All right guys, in today's video, we are going to be installing the cooler for the power steering. Uh, we're gonna remove the old stuff and uh, replace it with something that's uh, more compact and uh, not in the way of the radiator. So uh, let's get right to it. All right guys, so the plan to replace this oil cooler for the power steering was to, you know, use a smaller one and place it down here somewhere or on the side there. Uh, that is not gonna work because of the uh, windshield washer reservoir is just too big. There's no extra room. And because I relocated the oil filter system here, uh, there's not much room there either. So. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is not use this instead use this which is a um, a single pass cooler but it almost acts like an aluminum heatsink and I'm hoping that I can mount this on top of the this bracket here um, and have the uh, one of the lines that goes right to the rack come around this side of the car as opposed to right now they both come swing around this side and they both uh enter from the left side here or you know when you're looking at the car uh but i think one of them comes out of the rack on this side so i think i could move that line to come in through here and then back to the uh uh reservoir which i think that's just a return line or feed line so i don't think it's any of this is uh under pressure to be honest with you so uh, I just have to find a way to mount this that doesn't interfere with the uh, bumper. So I have to do a little bit of measuring and I believe some cutting of the bumper as well. Okay guys, so my first step is going to be to actually um, take as remove as much fluid out of this reservoir as I can. Uh, I'm going to use this oil extractor for that. Um, it basically you pump it, it creates a vacuum. I'm going to stick this uh, line down there try to get it as far down into the feed line as possible and then hopefully that will allow me to remove the hoses from the reservoir tank and also from the cooler and then try to reroute one of them around the other way um, but again first step let's remove uh, the fluid from there Okay, so I removed the cooler. I plugged the lines up with like a bolt, a 3 8 bolt. Um, and now I'm going to try to feed one of these lines through here. So you could kind of see they, they kind of pass over here behind the headlight and then they go over here. And then one turns 90 degrees and goes up into the reservoir while the other one continues behind the engine all the way around and down into the power steering rack right on that edge there so uh i'm gonna the one that goes that way i'm gonna try to fish it around this way instead uh so that's what i'll do now and then i'm gonna try to remove this reservoir i think pretty much got all the oil out of there and then uh this is one of the points that was leaking it's this hose but at the pump down there uh it's gonna be hard to see but um you kind of see it right there it's a little bit out of focus, but uh, in any case, I'll remove the air filter and it'll be easier for us to see.
Okay, so I got the uh, power steering reservoir out. Uh, this hose is just so dry and hard that I could not um, remove it. I was afraid to break the tank, uh, break the nipple off the tank here. So I just cut it off and then um, with a utility knife, I was able to get it off without damaging the tank. Um, the other one, the, the other line that goes to the cooler came out no problem. So that was no... No big deal also uh, to remove this bracket obviously um, you can remove the tank by removing these screws that are attached to this bracket but it's they kind of are screwed from behind it's really hard to get to the easier way to do is there's basically a nut inside the inner fender uh, or, or um, wheel well and it's a 13 millimeter bolt and you could actually you don't have to turn the wheel if there's enough uh, access to to put a a uh, open wrench or something like this a, a ratcheting wrench to get in there and remove it uh, i'm also going to clean this up but uh, but next step is to see what i have to do about this line if i have to reroute it is it is it long enough do i need to order some new hoses i am going to need to order a new hose for the the feed line into the power steering pump uh which i knew i had to do already because that's le it's leaking down there and uh actually let me show you where it's leaking now that i have the Air filter out of the way all right so you could see right here no it's out of focus there right down there um it's just uh held on, held on with the jubilee bolt i don't think this is a pressurized line this is just the return line or the feed line uh the small one i believe is the return line so uh, all we got to do is um, uh, remove that banjo bolt and then I can measure that hose to figure out how, what kind of hose I need for that. These smaller ones are 3 8 ID. Uh, obviously, you got to get um, hoses that are compatible with uh, hydraulic fluids. So a transmission, automatic transmission line will work uh, or obviously power steering line. Okay, we got the hose out and this part here was rubbing against um, the AC lines here pretty badly so I think it might it would have probably eventually burst over there um, but in any case I did have to remove this little bracket that that's just bolted to the fender right there um, I guess originally both lines went through here but now because of the oil cooler, the, the smaller one wasn't routed through here anymore. But we'll replace that with something else. Um, yeah, so now uh, I have to measure the ID for this guy and try to source. Maybe an auto parts store will have something like this. I don't have to order it online. Uh, they should also have the 3 8 line uh, in case this one doesn't reach. So right now, just going to continue routing and kind of kind of try to figure out how much hose if any additional hose i need for the 3 8 line and obviously then i gotta order a little bit of that one to make it work okay so i was able to find 3 8 hose for power steering no problem actually i think what i got is for transmission uh which is fine because this car uses automatic transmission fluid in the steering system not power steering fluid the problem is this 5 volt 5 8 id hose I can't find it anywhere, so um, I might have to order that online. I went to Napa and Advanced Auto Parts, all those guys, they don't have anything that big that is rated for transmission or power steering. Uh, they only have um, half inch and that's not gonna cut it. So in the meantime, we're just gonna go and install the, uh, the cooler. Uh, so the game plan is to use these mounting points here for the bottom of the intercoolers there's two and i remove the um the original bolts there and the plan is going to be to um put a bolt from behind use this threaded spacer that is a m6 to create a space right there 
right on both sides and that will allow me to then mount this uh, piece of aluminum this is uh, see here it's uh, three quarter inch by three quarter inch uh, when they thick so it's pretty sturdy um, I'm just gonna cut a piece that could span from here to there and then I will um, drill holes to mount the intercooler the not the intercooler the um, power steering cooler to it and I also found this hardware that works for mounting it's actually imperial size it's a quarter 20 but you could see the head the hex head is perfect for mounting in there so I guess this was designed for imperial fasteners so uh, let's measure the um, the angle bar right here and cut it and then we could start drilling our holes
Okay, so I installed the bumper just to make sure that the cooler didn't interfere. Um, I was originally going to mount it on top, but well, it would hit the, this part of the bumper here, so I mounted it on the bottom instead. Um, I think uh, it's it's just touching a little bit. Actually, it's not touching, but it's a very close gap. I might trim the bumper a little bit. I'm going to trim it anyway over here around the fog light opening. So um, I might trim just that little piece there. You could see I took out the this mesh from the bumper. I'm going to replace it with a new one after the bumper gets uh, resprayed. But um, yeah, I guess now is just time to do the plumbing and fill the reservoir and that should be it for this project. All right, so I finally found a 5.8 hose for hydraulics. So uh, I went on a website called McMaster Car and um, they sold it uh, by the foot, which is perfect. Uh, Granger also had it, but the Granger, I think you had to buy a 50 feet or 25 feet, something ridiculous like that. So in any case, this is a 16 millimeter or 5.8 ID uh, hydraulic hose so it's got like a PTFE lining on the inside and then it's got a woven um, layer and then rubber on the outside so uh, we could uh, connect this to the power steering pump um, and then um, once we have the lines routed for the going from the cooler the return line from the cooler to the reservoir tank we could uh, cut them to length and attach them to the reservoir
all right guys so we got all the plumbing done everything's buttoned up i use the jubilee clips here because that's going to be easier uh, to remove uh, without damaging those plastic nipples that come off the reservoir tank if I ever have to remove it again in the future. Uh, so next thing would be to fill up the reservoir. Again, uh, the recommended fluid for B-Turbos is uh, right there. Uh, that one there, it says, um, here you go, hydraulic steering. It's GM rated ATF Dextron, so you see right there. So I'm actually going to use this Mobile One product. It's uh, Dextron and Mercon. So Dextron is like the GM brand, brand, and Mercon is the Ford brand. Um, it's hard to find just Dextron, um, and there's so many different ones. Like you can see here, the Dextron four, two, three. You know, it, it just keep and then uh, work on, but I don't know if they're not specific or which Dextron. So this is just regular red, red ATF. So uh, we'll fill that up. Now, um, I will need to start the car and cycle the pump by turning the wheel all the way left, then turning the wheel all the way right, doing that a couple of times until the reservoir kind of levels off. Uh, it is pouring outside, so I'm not going to be able to do that part today, but I can fill up the tank to the point where uh, some of it could kind of fill up the... It won't fill the return line, but at least it'll fill up the tank in this V2. And, um, and then next time I get some sunny weather, I'll just start it up and cycle the pump. But basically that's all there is to it. All right, guys, so we topped off the reservoir. It took about um, a full uh, quart. I uh, turned the car on and I turned the steering wheel left to right a bunch of times until the oil got hot. And I could tell it's circulating because this is physically feels hot. Um, the hoses, the return line feels hot. So um, the way you check the, um, the level on these is there's a, um, let's see here. There's a, let me switch hands so you can see that better. But there's um, a, a full line when it's cold and then the full line when it's hot. I don't know if you can see that there. That says cold, that says hot. Um, so I, I had it up to the hot level before I even started the car. So I actually had to take a little bit of um, a fluid out because it started coming out through this little breather here. Uh, so I took it down to uh, to meet the, the hot level. So uh, we're basically all set. Now, uh, like I mentioned before, I do have to look to see if I have to trim that bumper, but that'll be another video. And, um, you know, I'm pretty happy with uh, the setup. It's pretty simple. I don't have that ugly looking radiator in front of the intercoolers anymore. And it's uh, a much shorter travel for that return line. I'm not going, uh, from this end of the car all the way behind the next to the firewall and forward and I'm just coming straight forward right to the cooler so um, in any case uh, hope you like this video uh, I think the next video is probably going to be getting the um, windshield washer reservoir fixed and installed back on the car and possibly the horns I still haven't installed the horns even though I fixed the circuit uh, they've never been installed so now that I have all the oil cooler plumbing in place, it'll be easier for me to identify where I could put the horns. But again, I want to put the washer fluid reservoir back in place as well, because that will kind of dictate where I put the horns. Uh, in any case, guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, see you guys in the next video.